Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to continue to work on some reels from the uh, saltwater anglers of Bergen County. I previewed those earlier. And uh, we're going to show you today how to service the Daiwa Saltist. And it's the LD Lever Drag 30H. It's a nice single speed fishing reel. This one belongs to Bob. And uh, just going to make sure that everything is working before we get started here. But uh, we will start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts, which includes that rubber band holding on the spool uh, line. And now we'll, uh, we'll take the exterior parts off. This is a single speed. They also make a saltist and a double speed, or a two-speed wheel. Looks like I'm going to need a small screwdriver for that one. There's a set screw here that holds the handle on. And I like to keep these micro drivers and that nearby because a lot of times well just like this you can't get the longer blade in and uh, you really don't want to put a reel down too much while you're in the middle of working on it unless uh, you've got it well documented and how do you do that well you take pictures along the way to uh, to show you the steps that you've taken and uh, if you get stuck in the reassembly of the reel well you just reverse those steps that come on out the handle not is the same dimensions as a traditional pen uh, pattern so you can use a pen wrench to open that up I'll take that off all the pieces and parts that I take off I put into a parts tray I use the back of a uh, fast food container and uh, while I'm doing this I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you do subscribe to my channel please use the notification button to uh, see which ones I'm posting and when. I post all kinds. Today we're working on a, a lever drive that's been used in the salt water. And uh, other days we'll be working on freshwater reels. So we'll work the um, spinning reels and combinations and all kinds of reels. Just uh, use those uh, as a reference point. That notification button will tell you when I'm working on it. And well, that's best in terms of uh, letting you see the ones that you may be interested in using real repair as a service or a hobby. Well, we've removed the handle and that is going to allow us to remove the stem. Now we have the lever wind and I always like to set this into free spool when removing. There's an outer cap and a spring. And if you had any questions about this kind of a reel, go to a schematic. That's the best way to find a picture of what's going on in the reel and then if you go to uh, if you're having any trouble along the way that picture can bail you out one two three four screws there none in the back and they look to be flat bladed screws so we're going to take these out and uh, I'm taking pictures here would recommend you do the same my pictures are the video you don't need to do a video, but uh, as you get to critical parts in the disassembly, it's always a good idea to stop and for a moment and take a picture. That way uh, you can kind of create that schematic of your own. So for example, we noticed when we took the uh, handle off that there was a collar behind the handle and then underneath the, the handle there is a, um, a collar that goes through on the burring for this reel. I don't believe this reel has an instant anti-reverse. I think this reel may have the, uh, the traditional claw for it, but we're going to find out when we open it up. It's been a while since I worked on one of these. I'm not even sure if I did one of these in my, vi in my video library. That's why we're doing one today. Lever drags are uh, uh, an advantage. They have an infinite amount of uh, drag along the way. Typically, they have a single drag washer, a pressure plate assembly, and some uh, bearings in there that are going to make it easily castable. All right, I think these are just two bump stops. I do not believe that you have to remove those to remove the side plate. You don't. And this always happens all the time, guaranteed, when you open up this wheel. You're always going to lose that, uh, that adjuster there. Not a problem. Okay. Take a picture here. That way you can see what's going on. Interestingly enough, what's going on here is that this has fallen off of the stud here. 
And if you put that on, you're going to notice it doesn't fit right because, well, it's the back of the pressure plate that actually holds that in place. So we'll show you how to go about dealing with that one uh, soon. But for now, we're just going to remove the gears and make cleaning the, uh, the next task here. So we've got all of those in place. We can push the main gear through, and we do have an instant anti-reverse. So I probably should have known that. I probably should have done a little bit of research, uh, but that's okay. Uh, we just found that out here and now. I just pushed the main uh, front end burring out. I did that so that we can wipe that down and, and grease it. On the back side of it, we have a burring as well. And wipe that down. These are shielded burrings, so you can use oil on these. Going to oil the, the bearing on the back. Oil the one we just took off from the front. We're going to clean the pressure plate. This is kind of interesting because the pressure plates on these usually have the. Uh, it, it usually comes in flat, not uh, not indented. Well, you'll see that there's a space there, and the space there belongs to another bearing. I'm going to take that bearing out and put that in place. You want to check the pressure plate to make sure that there's no scarring or old greases or anything of that like that may inhibit the performance. This one's in good condition. I'm just going to set that off to the side for a moment. We're on the main gear. You want to make sure that's clean. Check all of the teeth on the main gear. These are very sturdy. They may be stainless. They're a hard, very hard metal here. Just check make sure they're not clogged with old greases and, and the like. And uh, once we do that, we can take our grease. I'm going to use Pen Precision Wheel Grease for this. And we're going to give it a healthy coating of grease. Because that's probably the number one issue when you're dealing with these. The greases tend to evaporate and dry out. And if left to their own, it's going to clog the reel over time. In this case, uh, the reel is in good condition. All right, we've greased that side. We've oiled the bearings. One more gear here. It's a single speed. So you only have the one gear in the center here. On the two speed, this little collar would actually be a gear side of it. And that gear side of it would um, intersect with a second gear, which is kind of where this, uh, this uh, burring on that wall would be. All right, so these two go together like that. We're just going to set them off to the side. And then we want to just clean the case up. So I'm just going to use a cotton swab to kind of get underneath there, clean out the base. I'm in pretty good shape so far with that. And I'm thinking this is the burning that goes here. Just trying to find it. We'll wipe that down in the back. And we can do the same thing here. We can put a little bit of oil into that burring, which has got a shield. All right, let's show you how to service the spool, and then we'll come back. And uh, we'll put this together. I'm going to just make sure that I remove the parts to my parts tray here. I can put those two main gears and this off to the side. They're in pretty good condition. Remove the spool. And a couple of things. Before you go too much further, get this spring off of there so you don't lose it. A good place for that is into your tray. And then I'm going to just rewrap this line. Now this line is dangerously close to being too much line on the reel. You should be leaving a space so that you uh, don't have the shoulders. This is pretty close to just getting past where you should be. I'm just going to take a rubber band. He had it wrapped on the outside. To me, these things always seem to jam when I go to reinstall. So I'm going to put that to the inside here. I'm going to move that out of the way because those are the ones that always jump out and get me when I go to push it through. So give me just a moment here so that I can basically avoid having that happen to me as it usually does. That's an experience as a teacher there, I guess. Well, if you, while I'm doing this, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're a little stuck, if you leave that in the comments section, I'll be happy to try and answer that for you. We're going to go to the back here. There's a bearing underneath here. There's a bearing on the other side. There's a floating pin in here. Don't lose that pin. 
I'm going to use a micro screwdriver to take these three screws out. They're very uh, small screws, so please be careful with them as you take them out. You can see a very, very tiny screw there. Just put that in my parts tray as well. That way, I don't have to go looking for them all over the place because they may have gotten knocked off of my table. two and there's one more that's going to hold that open so we're doing this because there's a burring underneath here and the only way you're really going to be able to oil that burring is to pull this out so we can remove that whole assembly now you want to check you got a couple of things going on here but this is the burring that you want to oil that's the whole purpose of pulling this out and under check the cavity make sure that there's no dirt there's a little bit of grease on here. Other than that, we're fine. Once you oil that burring, you can reassemble right back in. I just pushed the burring out on the other side. That's okay. That needs to be serviced as well. Line up your holes. Go back to your tray and get those small ones. Be careful not to lose them. Let's get them reset here. Some folks like to take the whole reel apart before they, uh, they start reassembling. In my case, if there's sub-assemblies that you can work on and reinstall. Well, I kind of like to do that because the less parts that I have in the tray, the easier it is to remember where the other pieces go. There's some, of course, that you just uh, you can't get to until the end. That's all right. But like this one, there's a sub-assembly that uh, you can do that on. If you were servicing a spool on a spinning wheel, for example, uh, you can go ahead and work on that. Some spinning reels you can work on the bottom and close it up before you go up to the top assembly. So uh, I like to work on sub-assemblies. Alright, we've got one more here. It's going to go on the last hole here. Me and the little screws don't play well together all the time, but in this case these seem to actually have a little indentation in that collar that holds these on. That makes it easier for me. Alright. A little bit of grease there. I don't know why they were greasing a plastic cook ratchet, but they did. That's okay. All right. The spool goes in, interestingly enough. The pin, normally you would see if you run a lever drag, you would split the distance on the pin. But in this case, it almost looks like the number 9 or the letter G when you go to install in the back end of it. Before I do that, I just want to do a couple of things. One of which is to coil a little click button there. The other is to do a little bit of a cleaning. I just want to get that burning out of the way before I lose that. I'm going to use a rod and reel cleaner. I'm going to use pen rod and reel cleaner. I have access to the inside of the case, so this is a perfect time to go ahead and buff up and get any of the uh, residual greases or anything that's laying on the case. Go ahead and get that done here while it's open. I like the uh, pen rod and wheel cleaner. It does a nice job of, of cleaning it up. I have to wipe off the excess. Then we can turn our attention back to the spool because we can seat this now. We have that burring. I'm going to load that again with some oil. That goes over the top. And then, again, you have to split this mostly down, like the number nine. Find the insert in the case here. Line them up and just work it till it seats in. I got lucky there. We also know that that little spring belongs on there, so this is a fine time to go ahead and put the spring back onto that. From the, the disc standpoint, this disc is, is hardly worn at all. If you found that it was, it was clogged with grease, go ahead and take a soft brush, pull it out, and you would do this off the reel, but uh, I noticed that this is in such good condition that it doesn't need anything. Then you do not need to grease this, uh, this piece. All right, that's the back end spool side of the reel. We have the gear side of the reel now. We have a missing bearing in the front. I'll put that in and probably knock it out again. Now let's just leave it off for a moment. We're going to put the gear in first. We have a bearing that I've oiled. There's light grease onto the shaft, which is going to ride. Oh, we don't want to do that. Shame on me. That is your collar for your anti it's an anti-reverse. You don't want grease on that. My bad. All right, I'm going to install that in. Now I can put the 
bearing on this side. I'll hold that down. We've got that double assembly here. We've got the pinning gear. You want to mount it just like that. This is your instant anti-reverse backup. This is the fail safe. Find the tooth orientation so that the, the foot of the instant anti-reverse here gets the jaw here. And then what you want to do is you want to slide this over and on like that. Now, as I mentioned, that is not the same dimension as the square inside. The square inside is this. It's the part that comes off of the, um, the pressure plate there. So what you need to do, and this is a little bit of a juggling act, but what you need to do is line that up as best you can so that it's square against square and then come on on top of that with the pressure plate and try and get it seated. And you'll know when it's seated. It's seated there because I can see that my internal piece is moving. I don't know if you can see that in the camera and that I have the instant anti-reverse on the back. I got a little bit of grease onto the pressure plate. That's okay. All right. So with this set, just as it is, we can go ahead and put the case back on now. Again, if you had a two-speed reel, you'd have a second gear here, and you'd have, instead of that collar being behind here, you would actually have a, um, a second set of teeth that when you pull in and pull out of the, uh, the two-speed, it would engage. All right, let's set this up. Let's bring that piece in. Line the case and make sure that you're nice and tight on that case. I'm not sure we are at the moment. Okay, we're gonna go back. It looks like this came off. You gotta be careful with these as you set these. So we'll do it again. Again, you wanna line this up so that you are pretty much straight on square on square okay pretty sure I got it that time so I'm gonna try and do it kind of in reverse of course I just pop the other piece out let's go ahead and set this again seems like one or the other wants to have the dominance all right you can see that we're much tighter on the pressure plate there now we'll do this again, and we have a nice even seal there now. Don't force anything when you're working on reels, regardless of what the reel is. Uh, you can only get in trouble and the reel won't work. If there's something like we noticed there, there was tension in the side plate when we were trying to mount it, go back and take a look. Chances are something is not, uh, not working properly was misinstalled, etc., and that's your chance to make it all better. All right, there's four of those screws. I have those in the parts tray, so those are coming out next. These saltists are nice reels. These are um, kind of where the industry went, right? It went from the bigger uh, monofilament-based reels to the lower or smaller profile uh, grade-ready reels that uh, can pretty much do the same thing as the bigger reels and it can do it more efficiently because it can put more line in a smaller area and uh, the lever drags well they've just been kind of the thing to do and I like them a lot because of the variability and adjustability of them and uh, they cast very nicely I mean they, there's no question about it you saw that there's several ball bearings in here as soon as I get this other screw in, I'll kind of show you how it freewheels. You can just see that something like that is just going to cast a mile as you do this. All right, well, we got two things left here. One of them we can probably put the handle on right now if we like. I'd like to do it that way. There's a collar that goes on. Got a little bit of dirt on the handle here, so I'm just going to clean that up a little bit handle, collar. 
going to use my scrubby here with the pen rod and real cleaner on it that we'll be using on inside the case just to clean up the dirt on the case on the outside here before we start putting all the exterior pieces on. I know I got the back side of the case but I didn't get this so let's do that right now. And I can grab that handle. Just be careful, you need to screw this so that you don't cross strip. And it may take a moment, but just do it until you're comfortable that you've got it square. If you don't have it square in the cross strips, you're going to have all kinds of issues in the alignment of this and you may have to go buy a new part if you strip it. Alright, I'm going to use my wrench to bring that over so that I have the scallop aligning with the set spot for that screw. That looks pretty good. Grab the little screw. My micro driver. Let's go put this back in. Now you could have put the free spool lever adjuster on first. In this case, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to keep everything together uh, for that reel. Okay, so we've started this in the free spool mode. That's the way we should be able to put this back on. Now we've got that little button and the spring. They go in the center. And generally, if you put the pressure right in the center of the button, you can get it started the right way, like that. Tighten it down, you're hearing the clicks, and now it's time to adjust. So we have free spool, and then if we throw our lever, oh, we need a lot more adjustment. Let's couple tighten. Whenever you're adjusting your, your lever drag, bring it back to free spool. Free spool. Okay, so we're picking it up towards the back end. Bring it back. Again, it's an iterative process. A couple more turns, free spool, clicks in first strike. That's a pretty good first strike. Finish. Oh, I think we need one more little adjustment on that. Probably like that. Free spool, first strike. That's good. Last strike. Yep, we're tight now. So that's a good one. When you're done with the adjustments, bring it back to free spool. And uh, like Bob did, Bob had an, a rubber band on the outside holding the line together. Uh, good idea, uh, so you don't get any kind of backlash or the like with that uh, afterwards. So, that's kind of it, and uh, this reel works nice and is ready to go fishing again. Looks good with the cleaning and all, and I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, please, uh, keep watching, have a great time fishing. The holidays are coming upon us. Please take the time to enjoy the holidays and uh, stay well. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.